Buongiorno and welcome to Italian Black Metal Time. Today we have a band called Latitia in Holocaust. Now, um, this time we have a couple of releases. We have the uh, 2019 release here called Fauci, Tra Fauci, and then we have this 2020 release called Heritage. And why so? Now, the thing is, I get a lot of uh, review albums which are basically backlog things. Like, for, for example, the 2019 release was sent to me many months later than it was released. And then again, this new one appeared before I even got to review the earlier one. So why not to put them both in a single piece of review video? And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Now, my first encounter with this band was many, many years ago. And it's one of the most horrible albums, one of the most horrible debut albums, in fact, which I've ever got to review. A totally horrible, um, mind-blowingly mind bad uh, self-financed uh, release, which came out. So I was kind of lucky not to have to touch this piece anymore since that. I mean, the second album, obviously, just kind of a past. And um, I totally got forgotten this band until it kind of a resurfaced under my radar, radar like a German U-boat. And suddenly I was like, okay, I'm being torpedoed here and all that stuff. But before getting into the music of these two, let's take a look how they actually look like. Fauci, Tra Fauci is the third album by the band. And um, what could be said is that this is very, very different from that debut album. I mean, everything has very much progressed or shall we say evolved since the debut album and luckily so because now the music is not horrible it might not be great still but at least it's it's very very different and it seems like these two guys have decided to let's make it worthwhile very interesting selection of images by the way i have to say that we have some of western images we have a burning uh, figure here we have some wartime stuff so kind of like hard to put the finger like what it is going on here now this third album is some 41 minutes or so and the style could be described as melodic black metal with kind of a artistic um, approach to the music this fourth album heritage is pretty much the same style but also a little bit evolved since the third album now Mostly it is kind of appearing how the... Okay, now I'm not getting out this out here. Mostly it's kind of obvious how the production is a little bit different. That is, it's more clear, it's more distinctive in sound, and basically like overall feeling is a little bit uh, better overall. Like if that third album was kind of a demo of this one. But there are more differences too. And um, meanwhile, the band has actually uh, kind of changed. Not the only, also, the label has changed. So uh, a lot of things have been going through with the band. Now let's tune in for the band's metal archive site so you can see the basic information while I tell you a little bit more of this music. Now, if we take a look once again to this band's discography, you will see that the band's first few years were pretty silent with demos and stuff, and then the first full-length album, 2009, which is their horrible one. This Rotten Light totally went under the radar. So 10 years between this first album and the third album, which we have here, and as well as the fourth album, basically passed. And that's kind of a long span of time where bands obviously usually either die and perish, or then they just kind of uh, get themselves up upgraded in so many ways, evolved, if you will. Now, this Fauci, da, tra, Fauci is an interesting face because it's melodic black metal. It reminds me a little bit, not too much, but a little bit of Finnish black metal style. I mean, there's a cer certain kind of uh, Finnish melancholy, if you will, with these melodies. But because the overall production is very, very different, this is also sounding very different, like overall, than these uh, Finnish bands. Because, for example, there's nothing raw here. There's nothing really dark here. So it's kind of on the verge of even being black metal in the first place. Now, obviously, some of the riffs 
and the fast tempo parts, not to mention these kind of screamy vocals, all the stuff that actually make you feel black metal. But then again, there are also very kind of soothing moments with, you know, kind of acoustic guitars and stuff like that, which kind of uh, take you a different place. Now, don't get me wrong, back in the 90s, obviously, we had albums, you know, black metal albums, which had acoustic guitars or soft kind of a synth parts. I'm talking bands like Dissection and the like, which then again, I mean, totally fit the music, but it was very, very different apart from the bands, which were more like straightforward and kind of a more aggressive and raw and all that stuff. I don't have to mention more names, I guess, than, you know, early 90s Dark Throne. But anyway, Latidia in Holocaust is even more on the kind of a softer, soothing side. And for some people, it's just like a blessing. But for some people, it's like, that's too much. It's kind of like a post black metal thing. Now, if we go to Heritage, uh, everything is basically a little bit more but it's also a little bit less black metal. Now, the production is a lot better here. That is, it's more clear and also more powerful at the same time, which, in my opinion, favors the music here. Because this is the kind of music with its kind of a post-black metal elements, which is almost like jazz at parts. I mean, you have those distinctive um, bass guitar parts, which are like, okay, these guys are going beyond the borders of typical black metal. And while there's nothing wrong with that, I mean, it's going to divide the audience into those who favor this kind of a bold move to move beyond the borders of traditional black metal, and that is first and second wave. And then there are people who are just like, okay, I'm not interested anymore. This is beyond what I'm looking for in black metal. So at the same time, this band feels kind of artsy, fartsy, as it totally feels like post black metal, or could we say third wave black metal. Really, it's kind of a hard to put this one into box because we people, we usually like things simplified. This is death metal. This is black metal. That's something else. But now that we have to kind of be dividing these into different categories, it kind of gets more complicated. And I don't know if people are ready for that. I most certainly am not too, too shabby about, you know, like, yay, more subcategories. Now, not only that, but also when the music comes beyond the borders, it's really hard to convince me to stay with this particular wagon of a band. Now, I'm a little bit kind of a divided. On the other hand, I like that the band is going its original path and not sounding like anything else. But at the same time, I feel like it's actually not that interesting because some of those parts, especially those non-metallic, non-black metallic parts, are more like, yeah, I kind of get what you're doing, but you're not skilled, you're not ready for it just not yet. I mean, they're interesting, but they're not that captivating. And as such, I feel it's very hard to choose my favorite among these two because they are decent, but they are not really good. And as such, if I had to pick the winner out of these two, because that's kind of like idea with the dual review, I would say it's very, very tight competition. Which would I choose if I had to go on the deserted island? I would say Heritage. It's in overall a little bit more improved version of the band what is happening nowadays in 2019, 2020 in Italy. Also, it's just 30 minutes and then some. So it's more kind of a compact and there's less filler stuff here laying around. With this information, obviously, you want to take a look at the music yourself. That is, listen to the music yourself. So click it, click those links and you will hear it. And in case you like it, consider supporting the band by buying an album. If not, well, too bad, can always win. Take care, more of the stuff coming your way. Bye-bye.